happy love and relationships farmer's bride and poems to compare it to. Just a quick thank you to the physics and maths tutor for access to the annotated poems. For more, the link is in the description. Three summers since I chose a maid. Too young, maybe. But more's to do at harvest time than bide and woo. When us was wed, she turned afraid of love and me and all things human, like the shut of a winter's day. Her smile went out, and twasn't a woman, more like a frightened fay. One night in the fall, she runned away, out among the sheep. Her bee, they said, should probably have been a bed, but sure enough, she wasn't there, lying awake with her wide brown stare. So over seven acre field and up long across the down, we chased her, flying like a hare, before our lanterns to church town, all in shiver and a scare. We caught her, fetched her home at last, and turned the key upon her fast. She does the work about the house, as well as most, but like a mouse. Happy enough to chat and play with birds and rabbits and such as they. So long as men folk keep away, not near, not near, her eyes beseech, when one of us comes within reach. The women say that beasts in stool look round like children at her call. I've hardly heard her speak at all. Shy as a leveret, swift as he, straight and slight as a young larch tree, sweet as the, fir as the first wild violets she, to her wild safe, but what to me? The short days shorten, and the oaks are brown, the blue smoke rises to the low grey sky, one leaf in the still air falls slowly down, a magpie's spotted feathers lie, on the black earth spread white with rhyme, the berries redden up to Christmas time, what's Christmas time without there be, some other in the house than we, she sleeps up in the attic there, alone poor maid, tis but a stare, betwixt us, oh my god, the down, the soft young down of her, the brown, the brown of her, her eyes, her hair, her hair. So this poem begins with the first line being straight to the point. The speaker chooses a maid, which is often associated with a virgin, and highlights her youth and her vulnerability. Now, throughout the poem, the farmer describes the bride as, with very animalistic terms, such as frightened fay. We caught her, fetched her, and like a rabbit, and things like that. And this demonstrates that she's treated not as a human, but as an animal that has run away, that has escaped. And by putting, there's no equal level between the husband and the wife. There's clearly a disparity and something missing within their relationship. There's also a sense that because the farmer is so busy, he does not have time to know his wife and they are very separated despite the union of marriage. Lying awake with her wide brown stare. Wide brown stare is how how talks about her vulnerability and brown eyes are often associated with innocence and brown is qu repeated quite a lot in the poem. Now the sibilance used in straight and slight shows the desperate beauty of the nature he compares her to and there is a maliciousness and sort of discipline that he wants to inflict upon her in straight and slight sweet as the first wild violets. Now this shows that he's not thinking straight and also contrasts with his wife's affinity for nature. The, shorten, the short days shorten. Now the farmer begins to indulge in self-pity, how it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and she sleeps up in the attic there. Also reinforces the sense of separation between the married couple a lone poor maid. Now this is the first time that we see the farmer have a little bit of understanding towards the maid, which is a point I've not seen many annotations come across. So by referring to her as poor, he does feel some sympathy. Tis but a stare. However, it shows that the farmer loves his wife, yet yearns for her more than 
between an animal and a person, but it's not entirely animalistic, but not entirely human either. The soft young down. And this is how she's treated not as a wife or an equal, but as a child or a servant. Now let's look at the poet context. Now it was actually written by a female, Charlotte Mew, between 18, who lived between 1869 and 1928. She belonged to a large upper cl middle class family and three of her siblings died young and two had experienced mental illness. She made a pact with one of her sisters to never marry out of fear for getting a mental illness and passing it on to her children. And she actually had fulfilled this, she never got married. And this poem was written when issues had started to arise about how men possessed women. So it was the beginning of feminist movement and suffragettes. Now let's look at structure and form essay points. So firstly, enjambment is employed occasionally throughout the poem. Now the poem shows the farmer progressively becoming more and more despondent about his marriage. The enjambment places an emphasis on these lines to highlight the distance between the couple and how isolated they are, despite being physically in a union. In terms of language essay points, there are quite a lot. So there's objectification from the farmer towards the maid through fricative alliteration, so frightened fay. The metaphor, her smile went out and twasn't a woman, shows he doesn't value her as a human. And syndectic listing in she turned afraid of love and me and all things human, which shows her isolation from humanity. Possession is also um, delivered in the poem, as Mew shows many ways women are oppressed by men. I chose a maid reveals how she is now under his possession and she has had no choice or no say. We caught her, fetched her home fast. Now this is another use of syndetic listing and their relationship is presented as archaic and subservient due to the domestic connotations in she does the work about the house. So another thing just to talk about here is the animalistic terms and that links to the possessive nature and the objectification. There is no sense of equality between the two people in the poem. Now let's look at poems to compare it to. So I've listed two here, Love's Philosophy and in terms of similarities between Love's Philosophy and Farmer's Bride, both speakers express frustration at their desire to, rem to remain unrealized. Shelley creates this impression through sibilance in single kiss clasp. Muse speaker is shown to be similarly dejected, tis but a stare betwixt us. In terms of differences in farmer's pride, nature becomes a symbol for the girl's oppression through the use of violent fricatives and the prey-like connotations of flying like a hare. Opposingly, Shelley references nature to create beautiful images in the listener's mind through the personification of fountains mingle with the river. Now let's compare Farmer's Bride and Porphyria's Lover. So both speakers in the poems are similarly characterised as possessive and they objectify women as males. She was mine and shy as a leveret. Both poems are similarly long, and this shows the speaker's obsessive tendencies. In terms of differences, in Farmer's Bride, the speaker seems more aware of the suffering that he inflicts on Porphyria's lover. For example, too young maybe, and I've hardly heard her speak at all. But in Porphyria's lover, there seems to be no realisation at any point of what he's inflicting upon her. So for more videos on GCSE English, Geography and Religious Studies, make sure you subscribe to Know for GCSE and thank you for watching. See you soon.